coming in now. And we are recording. So you can go ahead and start. Okay. Hi, I am Kelly Waymond, and I have been working with Silhouette for a long time. I love the machines. I've had them for more than 10 years, been teaching about them for 10 years or more, and so I'm thrilled to be here again. Uh, this class is doing, we're doing a reverse canvas technique with heat transfer, and we're taking um, a plain, a plain stretched white canvas, and we're going to deconstruct it and turn it into this. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and use the chat, and I will try and answer your questions. Um, and I just wanted to point out that I'm going to be using a heat press today with the heat transfer, but you can also use a home iron. If you're using a home iron, just uh, usually set it on cotton setting and make sure that there's no steam. Uh, I like using a heat press just because there's even temperature and even pressure, but you can absolutely, especially for this where it's not going to be washed or handled a lot, um, an iron should be just fine if you don't have a heat press. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and go, can we go to an overhead shot? So I'm just going to take the canvas and cut away the, the fabric canvas part. So I'm just using a craft knife and I like to just go along the staples. It's all going to get trimmed down later. I'm just using my nice sharp craft knife and I'll be able to pull this away. Uh, there are different ways you can do this. I'm going to leave the staples in the frame, but you can get a tool that will actually pull those staples out. So maybe if you're making this for um, a gift or something, you might want to actually pull the staples out. I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to paint over them. So I'm leaving my staples in place. And a sharp craft knife or exacto knife is better than a dull one. And I'm using an 11 by 14 inch canvas, but um, you can use any size that you want. You would just change your design to fit the size of canvas you're using. Okay, so just and if it tears a little bit, it's not a big deal. Like I said, we're going to be trimming the outer edge as we get further in the process. Almost there.
Okay, so now we've got our frame and our canvas, and it's always a little bit of a surprise. You never quite know what you're going to get for your frame, but um, if you want it to be nicer than what you've got, um, you can sand it down. I'm not going to worry about sanding it down. Um, so let's go ahead and paint the frame. I'm just going to put down some parchment paper to protect my work surface. Okay, so I'm just going to start with some black craft paint, some, just some acrylic paint. And a foam brush, and we're just going to paint the whole thing black. If you wanted to spray paint that, I'm sure that would work as well. But I find that the craft paint works, works pretty good for me. So you want to get all of the various sides. Top, bottom, back, corners inside, all of that. And I'm just painting over the staples. And again, if you wanted to make it nicer, you could pull the staples out. But if you're not worried about it, just leave them in there. All right, and I'm not gonna spend the time painting this whole thing and watching it dry, but let me show you what I do. There are some areas, I don't know if you can see, but when you're using a dark paint color, there's these gaps from the miters in the corners. And so I take one of these, I guess it's a glue brush, um, and just get that, just dig that in there to kind of fill in those holes with your dark paint color. So they're not, those holes aren't noticeable. And Michaels does sell these little glue brushes. They're same place as the foam, the foam brushes. All right, so that I won't spend all that time. Um, this is my painted and already dried black frame. So what we want to do before we move into the software, um, we want to measure what the actual opening is. You know, this is 11 by 14, but we don't have all of the full 11 by 14 to work with for our design. And we don't want it to even come up all the way to the edge. So this is, the opening is nine inches across. And just past 12 inches. So we'll say it's nine by 12. This is the opening we're gonna work with when we're ready for um, doing the design. So, frame is done. We'll move on to painting the canvas. Let me clear my space just a little bit. And I'm going to work with a fresh piece of parchment paper that does not have black wet paint on it. All right, now you could leave this white if you want. I think it's fun to add a little bit of color, especially when we're working with mostly black heat transfer. Just to lay flat. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this Quick and dirty. 
just pour my paint straight onto the canvas to do a gradient. So yellow and orange, then red, and then we might add some pink and purple towards the bottom. But uh, fresh foam brush, and we won't see this whole area when we're done. Um, but if you kind of go to the crease marks, then you know you've covered enough. So move into the yellow, start with the yellow, move into the orange, and then kind of draw the orange a little bit back up into the yellow. Then I'll move down, start grabbing my red. And yeah, I think I will add a little bit of pink and purple. And we can pick our best spot for the frame once it's done. The area that'll actually show. Okay, so that is basically all I do for the paint. And then you would want to let this dry. It's totally fine to uh, use a blow dryer and uh, help that drying process along. I'm going to go ahead and set this behind me. And this is one that I already did, and I've, uh, it's all dry. And you can see that when we put the frame on there later, we can kind of pick our, our best spot. So for now, I will go ahead and set this aside. And that's all the prep work. And so I'm going to just move into my software to get the design ready. Okay, so let me get my screen share going. Okay, everybody can see that. So remember we measured our rectangle, uh, our opening for the frame, and so that was nine inches by 12 inches. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. So I'll grab my rectangle tool here on the left. And I will draw it to be nine by 12 inches. I can get it close and then I'll just go up to my scale window up here. It's unlocked. So I can just input the dimensions, nine inches wide and 12 inches high. Actually, I'm gonna move this over to the side so we can see the whole frame that I've created. So I'm gonna open this design that should have been in the supply list when you registered for the class. It's Happy Halloween. Oops. That is not grouped together. So I'm going to take my selection, just drag a selection around it, and group the word happy, and then drag another selection box to get the Halloween. And I don't want to select the bat, but with Halloween selected, I'm going to group that. And now, you can bring this over and see if it needs to be resized to fit that opening. And that actually is a good size. Use my alignment tools to make sure that lines up. So this is a good size for that opening because I've still got white space above and below and on the sides. And so that is the size I want to work with. I'll move this bat over. So we are going to go ahead and cut our heat transfer. I'm gonna use black 
just smooth black heat transfer for the, the word happy. And smooth black heat transfer is more of a traditional heat transfer, and so it needs to be cut in reverse, a mirror image. So I'm just gonna right click and choose flip horizontally. Okay, so that is ready, and I've got my grid turned on. If you wanna turn your grid on or off on your mat, you can just hit the letter G. But I can see that this is seven inches wide and two inches high. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my mat for this heat transfer because I only need that small scrap. I don't need to feed the whole thing in through the machine, although I could if I needed to. Uh, I'm gonna cut this from two inches by seven inches black smooth heat transfer. Uh, the other thing, that's a good idea to do is a test cut. Now you can use um, the test cut in the software, but I like to do a manual test cut. And so I'm gonna go over and grab a shape tool. It could be um, a letter, a star, anything. I'm gonna go ahead and just use a star for my shape tool. And these flexi shapes, I think, are only available in Designer Edition Plus and Business Edition. So if you don't have those, just go ahead and use a letter or something. I'm going to go to my Send Panel. And I just want to cut this star first. And so I'm going to select the word and choose No Cut. And so now the only thing that's showing bold that's gonna cut is this star. So that'll just be my manual test cut to make sure I've got the right settings. Okay, so then I want to do heat transfer smooth as my material. And it's set, it's already recognized my machine. If you need to select your correct machine, you can choose it down here on the lower left. Just click on that little machine icon to make sure that your machine is connected. And so heat transfer smooth. I'm gonna do it on a blade on two. And I'm gonna go ahead and increase this to what my previous test cuts were. You can always start with the default, um, and that's why we do a test cut. Start with your default settings, but I'm gonna go ahead and test cut with what I think is gonna work better for me. So blade on two, force of 12, and speed eight. And I will get that ready to load. Onto the, into the machine. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we can go back, go back to an overhead shot. All right, so we've got the machine in here. Now I need to find my There we go. Okay, so this is smooth heat transfer that I have already trimmed down to that two inches by seven inches I talked about. Um, this is got, it has a glossy side on the back. That is the backing. It's a sticky liner that's already applied to smooth heat transfer. And so I've got kind of a dull side facing up. That's the back side of the heat transfer. And that's why we flipped that image. Um, to cut it. So the word happy we have flipped in reverse because it's cutting from the back side. Okay, so this first cut is going to be that little star as a test cut just to make sure that my settings are right. So I'll load that. And go back to my software and I'm just going to click send. to cut that star.
Okay, so it's using the auto blade. You saw it automatically adjust. Go ahead and unload that and use my hook tool to make sure that, that star comes off cleanly. And it does. I'll load that back in. And make sure your mat is lined up with this uh, mark on the side here. It's just a line with a couple of arrows. Okay, and let me screen share again, just briefly. Okay, so you can see I cut the star and that worked well. So now I'm gonna turn the star to no cut. And I will set my word to cut. And so you can see how those bold lines are telling you what is going to cut and what's not going to cut if it's on your mat. Anything off to the side of your mat is not going to cut at all. Okay, so I've got still my settings and I'm gonna cut that word. So I'll go ahead and move my laptop back down. And sorry, I need to press send so it'll it'll go. And if you get heat transfer material, will give you a little pop-up warning um, for whether you want to mirror or not. If you mirror, that's going to change the whole. Um, cut, it's going to flip it over the other side of the mat. So that's why I like to mirror my own words with that flip horizontal uh, setting. And so then I can just say send as is in the send panel. I'll just wait for that to cut. Do we have any questions? We're good? Okay. Okay, that's done, so I'll unload it. And I can go ahead and weed this. I'm gonna leave it on my mat for right now just so I've got a good flat surface. But weeding is just taking away the material that does not need to be there. I'm leaving the letters in place and just pulling away everything else. So this is, with this smooth heat transfer, the backing is sticky. So I really like weeding heat transfer because everything stays in place and if your extra part that you're weeding, you know, falls, falls back down, it doesn't pick up, like with vinyl, if you drop your extra onto your uh, stuff that you want to stay in place, it'll, it'll stick to it. And with heat transfer, it doesn't stick to it. So I like that. So this is not a font. This is straight from that design. So a designer created this for the Happy Halloween. So it's all one design already made for you. Yes, so this is Silhouette brand, but same as Caesar Easy Weed. Uh, the shiny part goes down, the dull side faces up. A little bit stretchy. Now take my letter centers out.
One more. Okay. So that is the first part of our design. Uh, so the back side is the glossy side and it's sticky, which also helps when we get to the point where we're applying it to our uh, applying it to our fabric, our canvas in this case. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside and let's go ahead and design the um, spider web portion of this design. All right, so let me screen share again. Okay, so we'll go back to our design and I'm going to just move this off the page, off of the virtual cutting mat. And so we've already grouped the Halloween portion together, so that all moves as one piece. And I'm going to be cutting this one from the Caesar Easy patterns. And so this one's a little different of a heat transfer because the pattern is facing up. And so you, you don't need to flip it. You don't need to reverse it. We're going to be cutting from the top. And so we want to leave it in its normal orientation. So let's see, in this one, I can use my grid again to see how big that is. And if I have my material that's eight inches wide and nine inches long, that is enough to use for this. Um, I could change my page size. So machine is cutting, is the Cameo, my cutting mat is Cameo. I could change my media size to be eight inches by nine inches. And then that reflects the actual material I'm using. Sometimes I'll use my grid and sometimes I will uh, actually change my document size. So I'll center that. And now I can go over to my send panel. And I have found that with the Caesar Easy patterns, it cuts the same. I use the same settings as my smooth heat transfer. And so I'm going to go ahead and just leave that at the blade 2 and force 12 and speed 8. Now, if you are concerned about it, you could do the same thing you did before. Bring over this test shape and do the same thing as before. So you could turn the little star to cut and your regular design to no cut. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip that this time because I went ahead and tested this already. But you can do a test cut every time you try a new kind of heat transfer or a new kind of media, um, just so you don't waste that whole page um, by, by not testing it. Okay, so we'll get this loaded and then I will send it. Yeah, you're not mirroring this yes, the mirroring. Okay, so with regular heat transfer, um, let me go ahead and stop sharing that. With regular heat transfer, you're cutting the back side of it. So that's, it's got the glossy side and kind of the dull side and you flip it over and you cut with the glossy side against your mat and the dull side facing up. So you're cutting the back side of it. So the reason I'm not mirroring the spider web is because this is a different kind of heat transfer. This is the Caesar Easy patterns and the design is actually facing up and it's not, it doesn't have this sticky liner layer that other heat transfer has. 
sorry, let me grab this. So this is, it's got this cute spider web print on it and it comes with, we'll get to it in just a minute, but it comes with a layer that we're gonna lay on top of it. So kind of more like um, vinyl, you're gonna be using a transfer layer. Does that answer the question? That's why we're not mirroring it, just because it's a different kind of heat transfer. And it's made to be transferred with a separate um, transfer sheet. Okay, so let me get this onto my cutting mat and we'll cut it. So that was eight inches by nine inches. This is always harder to do on camera. You guys should try it. <laughs> okay, so the easy patterns, my pattern is facing up and we're just gonna cut that Halloween straight onto, straight out of this pattern. So lining up my mat again and loading it. And I just need to go back to the software and press send. Do we have any, any other questions at the moment? Are we okay? Uh, all came from Michaels. If I did not see the uh, black Silhouette Smooth Heat Transfer online, but I did have it in my local Michaels store, the Silhouette brand, but you can also use other brands of um, heat transfer. So I know they have a lot of Caesar at Michaels, and so uh, that's spelled S I S E R. So I got all of this at Michaels. Okay, I'll unload that. And I'm going to get a little bit firmer surface here. Weed this. Just using my hook tool to kind of grab a corner of this. All right, so the Caesar Easy Patterns, it is, the backing on this one is not sticky. I think it's like a, a static um, adhesion, but it's just clinging to the material. And so you want to be careful that you don't pull off the design that should stay there. So just pulling away. Everything except the letters. We want the letters to stay there. This one going pretty fast. This was the first time I had actually used the Caesar Easy patterns and I really like it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so now I just need to take out my letter centers. Oh, 
Okay, now this one, because it is facing up, we need to use the transfer sheet that comes with it to get it ready for applying to our canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. So kind of like using uh, vinyl, if you have used vinyl before, adhesive vinyl, you're gonna apply the sticky side onto the image. Actually, I might flip it over. Well, we're gonna just let that go. <laughs> I don't wanna pull it off of it after it's touched the sticky part, so. Now it's important to get a good adhesion here. So I'm gonna use my scraper tool to make sure that sticks really well. And I have some bubbles, which is not ideal. Let me see if I can. Pull that up. Yeah. If you can avoid bubbles and wrinkles, try to avoid bubbles and wrinkles. Let's see if we can get this stuck on anyways. Now, I believe you can use this transfer sheet a couple of times. The goal is to get it pressed on there firmly enough that it's gonna to stick to the transfer sheet and have that backing layer release. All right, and I'm actually going to trim this. I won't be using it again. It's gonna help me center it if I have the same dimensions on the back. Once it transfers. So generally, I would say take your time and be careful with it. I'm kind of fixing my mistakes of <laughs> getting it on there crooked. But if I have straight lines, that's going to help me apply it a little better. Okay, so now the trick is to I want the adhesive stuck to the sticky layer. Or the, I want the heat transfer stuck to the sticky layer. It's 
works much, much better at home when nobody's watching you, trust me. So embarrassing. <laughs> this really does come apart, I'm sure. Okay, here we go. So now I'm going to peel the backing away so I want the letters to stay stuck to this sticky layer. And go slow, make sure you press it down again if it needs it. Sometimes if you apply pressure with your scraper tool while you're peeling, that helps keep the design down where it should be. Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're making progress. I made that look way harder than it actually is, so it really is fun. <laughs> okay, I got one little stray bit of something there. I want to make sure that's not heat transfer so it doesn't we don't want that to stick to the canvas okay so for now i'm going to put this back on that backing to hold it in place and last thing we need to do is to cut out some cardstock bats for the little elements at the end so i will go back into my screen share. All right, so we want to cut some little bats. Go back to my design page. Move this off the mat. I'm going to set my media size back to the full page. And I want this bat that came with the design, but I want three of them. And so that's one of the fun things about Silhouette Studio is if you want to change something, you can. So I'm going to hold my, I'll select it and I'll hold my control or command on a Mac 
hold the control or command key and just tap your arrow key and it'll make a copy for you. So just make sure I've got those on my page. I've already trimmed down a piece of cardstock ready for this that's three inches um, high. And so I just wanted to make sure that that fits within the three inches height on the grid. And go to the Send tab. And this time we are going to cut it from cardstock. And I've already tested this one. I'm going to choose adhesive back cardstock just because I like that setting. It cuts through really well on the paper I'm using. And so this is ready to cut from cardstock. Okay, get my handy dandy mat one more time. And my cardstock. And just put it in the upper left corner of my mat as always. Press it down, load it into the machine. And in my software, I will go ahead and press send. And we'll get those little bats cut out. <laughs> I was when I oh I'm happy you guys were supportive and not mean to me for my <laughs> my heat transfer uh, debacle okay so three bats cut from cardstock and we are done with the cutting part so I'll go ahead and move this out of the way Okay, so now I need those two. We're going to move on to the heat press. So I think I will move this little example. So we can use the heat press. I've already preheated this. And so we've got our painted canvas and our painted black frame. And so now we're going to go ahead and get this lined up and ready to press. So maybe an overhead, overhead view just briefly. OK. So take your frame and kind of pick the color that you like. I think that looks pretty good right there. Um, we're going to be trimming off this extra. And so you can do this part now or later. I'm going to go ahead and mark where I want this frame. I'm just going to draw along the canvas. That'll all get trimmed off and not seen. So it doesn't matter if you use a pen or a pencil or, or what. This will help me get my frame back in place too when I'm, when I'm ready. OK. Now we're going to position this where we want. And can, you can see that that was cut on the back side, but it's uh, 
it's the way we want it for actually sticking it to the frame. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. The, the two types of heat transfer, you can use the same temperature and time. So I'm gonna be doing these at 305 degrees on my heat press and that'll be 10 to 15 seconds. Is this liner. And as long as I don't have an overlap, you know, I don't want the liner sheet of one to be overlapping onto the heat transfer of the other. So I'm going to keep them separated. just so there's nothing that will um, interfere with the adhesion. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Press that down a little bit so it doesn't move and move my frame away. When you use a heat press, you want to use a protective layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this here. Make sure I can feel the bottom of my uh, platform so I know the design is fully on there. And then I'm just gonna put this parchment paper on top to protect it. And press it down. And again, 305 degrees is what I'm using. And we're going 15 seconds. So we'll pull this off of there and make sure that sticks while we remove the liner. What do you do if it's not sticking to anything, right? Yes, so if it's not sticking, and this is the same as if you're doing an iron, you can go ahead and press it again. Just, just lay the, the whole thing, the whole liner back down and press it again for a few seconds. And um, try peeling off the liner. Mm -hmm. paper. So that is regular parchment paper from the kitchen. All right, so that looks like it's coming off, okay. Just go slow enough that if you need to press it again, you can. Yeah, just go slow and make sure. Okay, and then Joe from Caesar says to press it again in a couple of seconds when you're doing the easy pattern. Now we have the heat transfer applied. So we've already drawn the little trimming lines. So I'm going to go ahead and we will just cut this off, cut off the extra. And I'm gonna go just a little bit inside my lines. Those are all gonna be covered by the frame anyways. So just a heavy uh, acrylic ruler and a self-healing 
cutting mat. Turn that extra off. And in just a minute, we're going to glue it back together with the frame. Okay, so now we've got our canvas, and this time it's going to go on the back side instead of wrapped around the front like it came. We're just going to use that frame to be the new frame like you would use for a picture. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and add some thumbtacks to hold it all in place before I just use hot glue. And you could use, uh, to reattach it, you could use a staple gun probably. Uh, I'm going to just use hot glue. All right, so I stretch corner to corner, kind of make it tight. thumbtacks to hold it in place. So why do you call the reverse canvas? Uh, just because you take a canvas panel and then you're disassembling it, you're just disassembling it and putting it in Reverse the how it came. Check, check my that still looks looks good. And I'll finish putting in a couple more thumbtacks. And I didn't come up with the name reverse canvas. That's been around for a while, so I'm using the name others gave it. <laughs> okay, so now we will get glue gun and make sure I've got a couple of these ready to go. And we're just going to glue that all against the frame. Oh, actually. I got this thumbtack a little too deep, so pry it up a little bit. Okay, so again, I'm just going to do this in small sections and kind of um, hold it tight as I add the glue. Stretch again and press down. And I'm putting the glue a little closer to the opening of the frame as opposed to right at the fabric's edge. Stretch and press.
you're mostly there. All right, so that is our canvas. Now I will go ahead and just make this a little bit cleaner using my ruler and cutting off maybe about a, cut it to about a quarter inch close to the edge. Just makes it look a little nicer, but that's only uh, aesthetics. You can you can leave it. I just didn't want any of my canvas to be peeking out from behind when I have it on display. I think you get the idea. You can finish that up. And so now we will just add those little bats. So these are paper. I love working with paper. I'm just gonna kind of fold those bats up at the wings and then just give them a little curl with my fingers. Fold. Curl. Let's see, where did I put the last one? On top of the N, okay. All right, and, and if you didn't get your design perfectly even this is where these little elements you can kind of place them out to the side to to fill up that white space if you need to kind of shift the look of your design one way or the other you can use those as little balancing elements so just hot glue again Do we have any any more questions as we are wrapping this up? Um, Jamie Smith wants to know if you'll have any other classes. Uh, I don't have any more like this scheduled at the moment, but uh, that's not to say there won't be more. <laughs> I have I have a lot of classes um, you can find through my blog. My blog is findingtimetocreate.com and that'll direct you to everywhere that I have classes and tutorials for Silhouette uh, and otherwise. Okay, so that is our cute little Halloween reverse canvas decoration. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And if we don't have any other questions, then I will say goodbye and thank you so much for joining me.